Stay tuned to another episode of Fishing is Therapy, guys. Thanks for watching the previous video where we actually did a full one-year breakdown of my boat after I already had a one-year breakdown. So it's about two years with this boat now, almost two years. But I want to let you know the bread and butter, the thing that keeps this boat running well is a 20 horsepower Tahatsu fuel injected. This motor, I bought it from Backwoods Landing, all right, but it's a Tahatsu. You know Tahatsu also has dealings with mercury, anything under 30 horsepower, I'm pretty sure is actually Tahatsu. So people know about Mercury. Tahatsu is actually the brand behind that. Really well built uh, motor right here. Haven't had any issues. Well, actually I can't say any issues. I've had one issue. On a really cold day, it was about 35 degrees, 32 degrees really, and she wouldn't crank up. She wouldn't crank up because I realized that my fuel line was a little froze over, which is really interesting. Once I got her warmed up, she started up like that. Never had an issue since then. And that was early, that was early winter last year. All right. So 20 horsepower to hustle. Let me tell you, show you guys how she is under the hood. Just so you can know about her wear and tear. Look at that. Come around here and take a look. See? So um, I added a tachometer to it. Right here on the front. I added a tachometer just so I can know how many hours she has on it. She has about 30, 35 hours right now on her, on the tachometer. So I have that just hooked in. It's a really easy process. I just bring the wire in right through there. But get you a tachometer. These are on Amazon. I'll link them in the description as well for you, okay? But let's take a look at just all the parts right here, okay? This is the fuel filter. I buy these now from outboards.com. I buy these. I change them out. I have a, a schedule where I do it about, same, about the same amount of time I do my... Uh, my uh, car, but probably about every, every about four to six months. Usually about every four months I change that out. Fuel injection to let you know that there's no water in here. Um, just for you guys who didn't know, when that red ring, if it elevates and goes up, that means there's water in your fuel. You can see mine is at the bottom. Haven't had anything to worry about. Oil dipstick right here. You got the oil, but look how she looks pristine under there, okay? I mean, this is where I fill my oil. This is my oil dipstick right here. But I just want you guys to take notice of that. Look how the grease and everything is still holding, okay? Working out really well. Look at this down here. So I got her on a jack plate right now. I don't have it through mounted just yet, but I have it um, secured right here with a really heavy duty lock so it can't untighten, but I have it really tightened down well, so I'm not really concerned about that at this time. Now, let's go back down here. I have it on, the, um, I have it on a transom saver. Um, I'm on the back of my backwood landing trader, I lost three of these and I found out the reason why. This um, particular um, strap was too big that comes with this one. And it was, when, as the boat is bouncing up and down on the road, you're going over those different potholes and different things, it became loose and when it became loose, this released and it fell down. And um, I pulled up to a ramp one time and I was, uh, <laughs> I was getting ready to fish um, at, um, in Rome, Georgia, right? And when I pulled up, um, I'm getting ready to pay for the mission, and I hear, Brrr. what is that? And I'm looking, I see the little sparks. I jump out of the car so quick, I look back, and this, I have been dragging this for I don't know how long, but this had been whittled all the way down to here. And that's just, so just be careful, guys, when you get this. I bought mine from Tractor Supply, some more straps that are a little smaller. These are about eight inch right here, okay? Look, look at the prop. I've hit a few things. <laughs> I've actually ran over a door, guys. So it's actually down here. You see the white scuffing? I ran over a door that was floating in the water. It's like an old wooden door, which is crazy. But look at the prop right now. On this prop, I'm running the nine pitch prop because I have a heavier load with two of my buddies usually run with me. And so I have that on there and I'm getting about 22 miles an hour. Um, by myself, I'm about 23, but with them, probably about 18. It all depends on the weight, the load, all the gear, everything we have. But I wanna let you know this motor is running well, okay? It's over a year now. I can tell you without a doubt, look at her. Do you see it looks like any sign of wear and tear? No, okay. Handles work, levers work, everything's working very well. No issues, still I'm able to have my pins, but I just wanted you guys to really appreciate that, okay? So, you know, without further ado, thank you for staying tuned. I gotta get ready to change my spark plugs. I changed my engine oil, the gear oil, 
at the bottom. The lower unit oil, I change it, just like Andy said from Backwoods Land, I change it about every Thanksgiving, once a year. And I'm looking for if it's a cream color, if it's like a whitish cream color, I mean there's water in my lower unit, I need to have that replaced. Every time I do it, I haven't had that issue, okay? And I change my, my motor oil regularly as well as, remember, when you change your oil, change your oil filter as well. It's very, very important. Not just go around and maintenance my spark plugs, make sure everything looks well. And I've only had to use my pull start one time. This is what I really like about it is not only do I have electrical start, but I have the ability to pull start as well. I've only had to use that on that day that I was telling you guys about, all right? When um, she wouldn't start, I pulled it just to get her off the, off, the, um, um, off the trailer and out into the water. And then I was like, okay, let's just pull starter and get her going. She warmed up really good. The fuel line warmed up really well. And I've had no issues since. And that is, well, we're about three, three months away for being a year since that happened. No issues. And I'm, I'm running in the river. I'm running in lakes. I'm doing overnight. I'm doing everything. No issues. She sips gas. I got the three gallon gas tank in here right now. But with this 20 horsepower Tahatsu, um, I can go all out run about two hours, three hours straight, rough water, and I don't have any issue with their own gas. Right now, I think I still got a quarter tank of gas, and I ran all over Lake Lanier yesterday, all over an eight-hour day, and I still have a quarter tank right there, and I didn't even fill her up before I went. She was three quarters full. She has a quarter left. So what does that tell you? You guys, without further ado, get you a 20-horsepower Tahatsu or more or less. 9.9 .9 is good as well but I really sponsor them, you know. I mean, I would love to be sponsored to buy them, but I really stand by this brand. Tahatsu, I didn't know much about them, but I can say without a doubt, you guys need to get you one. If you're on the fence about it, don't hesitate. You won't regret it, especially if you got a boat like this. All right, see you on another episode of Fishing This Therapy. Thank you for staying tuned. Watch the other videos, give me a comment, like, and subscribe, and give me any feedback that you would like. I'm open to it all. See you on another episode of Fishing This Therapy. Peace.